Hey friend, Brandon here. Apple, after many, many years of neglect for the creator, people started having doubts, started begging, and had feelings of abandonment. But Apple has finally announced a fully redesigned Mac Pro. And it wasn't meant for you. I've read a ton of your comments, the rants, the fury, and you totally missed the point of the computer, and it shows. Your mom would be ashamed. Let me explain, because this is Tech Today. This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X by MacPaw, an all-in-one package to get your Mac running just like it did on day one. Click the link in the description to download your free trial now. Make sure to share, subscribe, hit that bell icon if you haven't already to be notified of when I post a new video, and give this video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. We've seen and heard about the Mac Pro, the newest, most powerful, most modular, most expandable, fastest, cheesiest Mac ever. After years and years of what has seemed like a massive neglect of the creative community, and then a Mac Pro that looked like a trash can and hadn't been updated for six years, to Mac Pro Pros that were losing the ports creatives needed like SD cards and full-size HDMI ports, to horrible thermals that made your laptop run slower than it really should have, or fans that were constantly running that made it sound like a helicopter was taking off. Apple finally made something for the creative type. And it isn't for you. And many of you complained and shouted so much that your misunderstanding of the computer really shows. You scoffed at the price of the Mac Pro starting at $6,000 for the base model, and you said that you could build the same thing yourself for half the price with even more power. You said it was ugly and that Apple dropped the ball on the design. You said that the Apple Pro Display XDR was way too expensive for a modern, and how dare they charge $1,000 for a stand? Well. On that one, I can kind of agree. But we'll touch on that in a moment. But you fundamentally do not understand that Apple didn't make the Mac Pro for you. It wasn't made for you. Even you, Linus, you missed the point. The Mac Pro isn't for you. But it wasn't entirely your fault. When they talked about the Apple Pro Display XDR, they just jumped into it without much of a clear and obvious explanation of who it's for. People have wanted a good Apple display for a while, and the last one we had was the Apple Thunderbolt display. So this was the refresh, right? Wrong. It's not just another monitor, but you really wouldn't have known that. Even if they showed a slide saying it had to beat a Sony monitor that cost $43,000. Most people saw that and thought, what the heck monitor are you looking at? We can get a killer monitor for under two grand. And that's because they weren't clear enough in what the Apple Pro Display XDR was. They didn't make it obvious that this was something that you take out on the field when you're making a movie rather than watching a movie. They didn't make it clear that it wasn't to play PUBG on, but to edit and color grade photos and video. They confused us even more by saying that you could code on it. I mean, if you want to go super extra, I suppose you could. But these displays aren't for the casual use at home, but in studios and sets. In comparison, the Sony reference monitor costs $23,400, and this refurbished one costs $16,500, and the Atomos Neon HDR display is $6,500. It's true that a 31-inch Flanders Scientific 4K HDR reference monitor costs $35,000, without a stand, plus $450 for shipping. If any of these had anything to help it stand up, it's just some dinky legs that make it look like wiener dog legs. I guess that's kind of cute. <laughs> Typically, these displays are found on a set with a vase amount or put into a Pelican or flight case more often than not and only taken out while on set. It's not meant for you, and they just didn't make it clear enough, which is why people groaned at the $1,000 stand price. In the Pro Stand, $9.99. And like the Mac Pro, they'll all be available in the, in the fall. Yeah, I still think it's outrageous, even if it matches the price point of seemingly simple parts like this metal plate for a camera that costs $1,000. It's a plate of metal with um, holes in it. It doesn't even have moving parts on it like an articulating stand. It's for a whole different group of people that usually won't need a stand anyways, and if they do, it makes sense for the industry, and a big company is probably paying for it. But don't think I'm just letting that pass easily. Like I said, I still think the price is really nuts, and I feel that way about camera gear too. But wait, there may be a few of you out there that may disagree with me and will say, but Brandon, they did say the display is made for pros, and that's true, but there's a big problem with saying it's made for pros. What makes something pro? What is pro about a OnePlus 7 Pro? Why do so many solo creators use Final Cut Pro? What makes them a pro? What about all the MacBook pros you see at colleges writing papers. The marketing in the rest of the Apple lineup is quite confusing. The only thing that can make some sense is the iPad Pro, because it can provide an incredible tool for artists and animators. So when we think of the Mac Pro, we logically think that this may be for me, and for you. And what if you want a desktop Mac? We don't really have that. We have all-in-ones, but not a desktop. So the Mac Pro is it, right? No, it isn't. It's not the same as the others because this pro actually means it. Gotta love marketing, right? By the way, can you think of other things named pro that aren't actually 
Pro. I was trying to think of more, but I was having a hard time thinking of some, and I'm curious. Leave a comment below on other things that are named Pro, and make sure to join the This Is Tech Today Community Discord chat server. So who is it for? Look at their announcement. It's not simply to listen to music on, it's for the audio engineer at a major scoring studio for films, or for the biggest brands who need avid cards to go way beyond any PC you could easily make. It's not simply to play Fortnite or some game, it's to make the game that you play with the Unreal Engine or, or Toy or other engines. It's not simply to watch a movie or video on, it's for the CG artists at studios like Pixar to make the special effects and CG in movies that you watch with Foundry, Max on Unity, or with the Afterburner card which helps with a video just like the Red Rocket X which sells for $6,750. You know, more than the cost of the base model Mac Pro. It's not simply to use your computer to use in your home, but to make the computer you use and the home you live in with Autodesk. Look at their advertising and the very words that they use. The Mac Pro is about power with the opportunity to push it to the extreme with the ability to expand it and to configure it, to spec it out so there's no constraint. And now this next one is really interesting because Apple has been accused of putting form over function so many times. And this is quite valid in many ways if we remember the thermal throttling or the keyboard issues with the MacBook Pro and their pursuit of thinness. With the Mac Pro, they've been accused of making the ugliest thing possible. That's because they put function before form rather than form over function, and yet they still get roasted. Honestly, I don't know how they can make anything without a large group of people that honestly would never even buy it anyways trashing on it. At the end of the day, a professional doesn't care about the form. It's going to sit under a desk or in a rack mount in some room they never go into. They need it to do a bunch of things and to do it well, even if it looks like a cheese grater. <laughs> It's not really for the pro, but the professional. The industry professional, the data center, the render farms. You see, there are tons of people who use Mac for their work in the industry and weren't looking to move to a PC anytime soon anyways because they needed OS X. So they waited for the next Mac Pro to give them the power, speed, expansion, and customizability they needed for their work. So now that the Mac Pro is here, you know what some of them will do? They'll buy a max out version for video, for audio, for this or that, and pay whatever it ends up costing to make their job easier faster and more efficient. Why wouldn't they buy a max out Mac Pro? Time is money after all. Do you know that Disney rendered Big Hero 6 using a 55,000, yes, 55,000 core supercomputer spread across four geographic locations and it took them over 180 days to render. Can you imagine trying to export a video and it taking you six months to do so? Yeah, they're gonna want a more powerful Mac that can be expanded to a ridiculous level. The new Mac Pro is that very thing. The answer that professionals have been longing and asking for is finally here. And that's why the price makes sense. It's the option and sometimes only option that works or makes sense or meets the needs of the people who will use it. And in most of those cases, is probably won't buy the base model. Plus, after so much focus on mass consumer devices, Apple is finally focusing on the professional again, and it needs to be profitable for them. That's business. The price needs to be higher to continue to fund and support Apple's focus on the true professional market with new development. You can't look at this in a vacuum. This is investing in a platform, ecosystem, and development team that creates something that helps professionals get their work done better and faster than if it ever existed at all. That's why there's the Afterburner card and other specialized cards. As a professional, you You'd want to make sure that the professional division at Apple is funded well. That's investing in you. So what is for you? Well, it's not for your mom to look up recipes. D mom, what, what are you doing? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom, no! Mom, you can't do that! Are you kidding me, Mom? That's a $6,000 computer! <sighs> mom! Mom! Are you okay? Are you okay? Hey, can we have mac and cheese for dinner tonight? Mom? For most, it's the MacBook Air, the MacBook, and the iMac. For those who are more power users like me, it's the MacBook Pro or the iMac Pro. All those options handle most of our needs. We don't need the overkill Mac Pro to play games, watch movies, write papers, or for your mom to look up recipes. And let's be honest, for many of us, we simply cannot afford to even buy an iMac or Mac Pro. And that's why you need to make your current Mac run like it did from day one with the all-in-one software by this video sponsor, Clean My Mac X by MacPaw. You see, my Mac Pro has been running super sluggish and weird for me. 
programming, which I just can't have when I make videos for you. Clean My Mac helps you easily manage everything on your Mac with features that help with daily housekeeping, clearing up issues, the removal of system junk to free up space. It just found 5.8 gigabytes of things I can delete. Whoa! The neutralization of malware and keyloggers. There's also a ton of other features on the side. This is crazy. It also identifies those CPU hogging apps and keeps your software up to date on an easy to use and well designed dashboard at the click of one button. It even works in the brand new Mac OS Catalina. Clean My Mac X was voted app of the month on Product Hunt and it sped up my computer in crazy ways with one click. If you have a Mac, you absolutely need Clean My Mac X. It has removed so much frustration in my everyday use and saves me time and that's always worth their investment. Go download Clean My Mac X right now by clicking the link in the description and start your free trial. So what do you think? Are you the majority or are you that pro, the real pro that needs something like this for your profession? For me, I'm strongly considering it if I can understand some of the upgrades better and their pricing. Maybe I should just get the base model with the upgraded processor and then upgrade everything else on my own and that would allow me to invest in the ecosystem of the case, the motherboard, and the support. Of course, that is if I can save up enough money and I can get it. If I do manage to get it, I'll make sure to make some videos on it, so please support my sponsor to help with that. My thought process is that this thing could last me at least seven years, if not 10 years, of gradual upgrades and changes as needed. And yes, that $3,000 markup that a lot of you talk about will even itself out over time since I won't have to buy a whole new laptop or other computer all the time. Let me know what you think about that, and if you want to watch more of my videos in my It Wasn't Meant For You series, check them out up here. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.